Hi everyone, we're continuing with some Chapter 2 homework problems, and this time we do number 17. A baseball player catches a ball 3.5 seconds after throwing it vertically upwards. With what speed did he throw the ball upward, and how high did it rise? Now remember when we're talking about objects that are thrown up and come back down. The two halves of the journey are symmetrical. So if it took a total time of 3.5 seconds, half the time was used going up, and half the time is spent coming back down. Also remember the original velocity going up is going to be the same final velocity before it hits the ball player's glove coming back down, but in the opposite direction. Also, the velocity at the tippy-tippy top is going to be zero. So there's a couple different ways we can handle this. I am going to do this by using, I'm going to look at only one half of the path. And I am going to look at the path from, um, let's say, from the bottom to the top. Let's say I'm only going to look at this part of the path. So we're just going to look at the part from the throw up to the tippy top. If we do that, the original velocity is unknown. We know the time is 3.50 seconds divided by 2. And I'm going to grab a calculator and just figure that out very quickly. 3.5 divided by 2 is 1.75 seconds. We know at the tippy top it's 0, so for just the yellow portion of the motion, just to the top, at the top, at the top, the final velocity is going to be 0. And we know that the ball is being slowed by the acceleration of gravity. Gravity is going to be negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Now remember what we said in the notes. If you have motion that is both up and down, you have to define one direction as positive and one as negative. I tend to, the kind of convention is that we call up positive direction and down the negative direction. So because of the fact that gravity is accelerating it in the negative direction, that's why it's negative and the original velocity, if this is going up, should give me a positive number. Now if I take a look at these variables, VO, VF, T, and A, the equation that comes to mind is VF is VO plus AT. So if I'm looking for VO, VO is going to be VF minus AT. So original velocity minus a final. Well, final at the top is 0. That's going to go to 0. Acceleration is going to be a negative, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time is 1.75 seconds. So when I do the math, 9.8 times 1.75, I end up with an original velocity of 17.15 on my calculator. Let's round it off to 17.2 seconds, cancel seconds, meters per second. This is a negative times another negative. Those are both positive. The original velocity was up. We defined that as positive, so that works. Part B, how high did the ball rise? So let's take a look at part B. If we want to know how high did it rise, let's solve for x. Again, let's look at half the path. So I'm going to continue looking at the same half of the path I looked at for this part of the problem. And one of the things that is a pitfall a lot of students fall into when they're looking at this is if they start here, throw it up, and come back down, the total displacement is going to end up mathematically being zero because it started and ended at the same point. If we want to know how high it rose, we have to look at half the path because we want to know from here to there. That's the x we care about, not the displacement from the hand back to the hand. So we're going to use the same first part of the path Displacement is my question mark. I know my acceleration. I now know VO. I know my time. I know velocity at the top. What equation am I going to use? I think I'm going to pick out lots of choices here. I think I'm going to pick out VF squared is VO squared plus 2 
ax. I'm going to solve for x. When I do the algebra solving for x, x is final velocity squared minus original velocity squared divided by 2a. Final velocity at the tippy top is 0, so that goes away. Negative original velocity when it left his hand. What did we just solve for? Well, we just found that that's 17.2 meters per second. So I'm going to put that number in. Slide my page down a smidge. 17 um, x equals, and this is that negative sign, 17.2 meters per second squared. And you'll notice this negative sign is outside of this squared divided by 2 times the acceleration. Gravity is a negative because it's pulling downward, 9.8 meters per second squared. And when I do the math, 17.2, 17.2 squared divided by 2 divided by 9.8, I end up with a positive 15.1 meters. This is a negative, that's a negative, those two negative signs cancel each other, and the displacement was positive because it went up from the ground, and I was looking at the first half of the path, and so the fact that we ended up with a positive number told me that in this section of the problem, the, it actually went up. So the math tells you an awful lot of detail about what is going on. Let's do one more problem. An astronaut is on a distant planet and wants to determine its acceleration due to gravity. The astronaut throws a rock straight up with an original velocity of 15 meters per second and measures a time of 20 seconds before the rock returns to his hand. What is the acceleration of gravity on the planet? So the rock is here in the little astronaut's hand. It goes up, it comes back down, um, it has an original vertical velocity upward of 15 meters per second. Now, we also know it's going to hit with a final velocity of 15 meters per second because in this kind of motion, it's symmetrical. The left and the right half, the path up and the path down are both symmetrical. The one thing we have to keep aware of is that we have to define both directions as positive or negative. So if you've got motion in two directions, you have to pick one as positive and one negative. I'm going to choose upward motion as positive and downward motion as negative. So I know original velocity. I know final velocity. I'm going to recall that acceleration is what I'm looking for. And the total time, total time, is 20 seconds. That's the time for the entire journey. So if I know T, V, F, V, O, I'm looking for A, what equation does that pop out in my brain? V, F is V, O plus A, T. Acceleration, final, minus original, divided by T. So acceleration is final velocity. Final velocity is down, so this is going to be a negative 15 meters per second minus the original velocity, which is up, which is a positive 15 meters per second. But where does that negative sign come from? The equation itself, divided by my 20 seconds of flight time. So I am going to end up with 30, negative 30, divided by 20. And I end up with an acceleration of 30 divided by 20, I end up with an acceleration of a negative 1.50. If we carry everything to three sig figs, it should be meters per second squared. Now, where do those units come from? I have got meters per second on the top. We can subtract these because they have the same unit, divided by seconds. So meters per second, invert and multiply, 1 over seconds, meters on top, seconds times seconds, seconds squared on the bottoms, yippity skippity, I've got acceleration units, it's negative, which means gravity is pulling it downward, by golly, physics works sometimes. All right, we'll come back one last time and do one more problem for this chapter. See you later.